today I'm going to be recreating three drawings that you have shared with the hashtag DrawMeWithWaffles over on Instagram, and I'm going to be redrawing them in my own style. And don't worry, they aren't all going to be mermaids. <laughs> So first up, this is a drawing by Vanessa Draws, and I fell in love with the color scheme. Ugh, so beautiful. <laughs> so I'm starting out with a pink, I think it's the rose-colored Colerase colored pencil, and I'm quickly sketching out the layout of the drawing. This pencil is very light, which I really like when I start layering Copics on top of it, or when I want to do line art and I don't want the sketch being super distracting. And let's just ignore the fact that I haven't purchased a pencil extender yet. I don't know where to get it around where I live and I don't wanna like buy it on Amazon and have them ship it in a box that could fit like, you know, the entire Encyclopedia Britannica just for this tiny little pencil thing. So <laughs> I've just been living without. <laughs> but yes, I do know they exist. <laughs> With some of these drawings, I did change some things up, but for this one, I mainly drew it as I saw it, but in my style. I put like the hand where the hand is, I put the elbow where the elbow is, I put the shoulders where the shoulders is, the hair where the hair is, and don't forget the little uh, <laughs> bunny ears as well. And this was definitely a warm up for the day. I don't know if anyone else gets this, but sometimes when I'm drawing and I haven't drawn like in a couple hours or a day or so, like my hands, I don't it feels like there's like little ants running up and down my veins or something. And it like, I don't know, it's like shaky feeling. I don't know if anyone else has ever felt that before, but it's like really weird. And it feels like I don't have control over what I'm drawing. And I was definitely feeling that <laughs> when I was trying to draw this. And I remember at the time I was like getting kind of frustrated, but this is now a couple hours later and I'm looking at it and it did not turn out bad at all. So I don't know. I think it was mostly just a mental thing, like feeling like my hands felt weird and my brain was like, ah, something's gonna go wrong. Now the sketch is done and there are some little problems that I made a mental note of, like the eyes, I did a little uh, too heavy on the eyeliner. Because the pencil is so light, that pink Colerase colored pencil, I can go over with the lines and, you know, fix it up when I do the line art. I don't recommend <laughs> leaving something for later you to do because I usually forget. <laughs> but I went in and did the eyes almost first. I don't know why I started with the bangs, but I did the eyes first. And that way I had it like in my head. I'm like, do not mess this up. Do not mess this up. Do not mess this up. And I think it turned out all right. <laughs> Oh, that's another thing. Like I usually use very thick and bold line art. I feel like it just hides a lot of my mistakes. So because I drew this illustration filling up an entire page in my sketchbook, which is not something I do very often, I felt a little insecure about using these like thin lines. And like you could tell when they were wobbly. <laughs> But once I started adding in the color, I definitely saw a lot of that insecurities kind of fade away a little bit because I was able to hide them with the color, which brings me to the color scheme. Yes, I love it so much. <laughs> Something I noticed right off the bat was the only thing that's blue in this drawing is the eyeball. So I made sure I did that first. And then I started picking out the pink colors that I wanted to use for the rest of the illustration. I ended up finding three that I thought fit the original drawing very well. The original drawing is a digital illustration, but mine is obviously <laughs> traditional and I'm using Copic markers. And I lucked out because I only have, I think, 70 Copic markers and only. <laughs> I'm very thankful for my 70 Copic markers, but it's obviously not a full range that you can get with digital art. So I was very lucky that I had the colors that I needed, which honestly, these are three colors that I use very often. So, so basically I used a pink color for everything, even the skin and the dress and like the ears and everything. What colors did I use? Wait, let me look. Okay, I put the markers away, but I think for the skin I'm using pale purple RV000. And that is actually our 83 Rose Mist for all the blushy bits, like the nose around the eyes and like the elbow and underneath the chin. And then I also think I used it to shade underneath the bangs. Yeah, there it is. <laughs> this just adds a little bit of depth. It makes the bangs look like they're sitting on top of the forehead instead of like being within the forehead, if that makes any sense. And then whenever I use the dark color, I'll switch back to the pale purple and blend it out a little bit. Here I used the rose mist to shade like the edges of the fingers, but honestly, it looks like she just dipped her hands in blood. You be the judge of that one. <laughs> and then for the hair, I'm actually using Lipstick Natural, which is E04. I use this for hair probably nine times out of 10. Yeah, I know I need to add a little uh, diversity here. It's kind of the color of my hair, maybe a little bit lighter but I just love it. It's, it's, it's basically the potato brown of Copic markers, at least for my collection. And it's a, it's a little tricky because the cap looks very purpley, 
but then when you start drawing with it, it's definitely a lighter brown. I wouldn't say it matches the cap exactly, but I've learned to see that cap and know it's the marker that I want because I love it so much. And even though it's a brown, it definitely has those purpley reddish undertones, which makes it work really, really well with this illustration because there are so many pinks that when we want to add a brown color, if we find a brown that is like, you know, a little bit of pink, <laughs> It looks really, really good together and it creates that soft look that I just love. And then all I had left to do was color in the flowers and I basically just used every marker that I had used within the illustration for the flowers as well. And that gives it a little bit more variety and doesn't make it like one same colored flower surrounding her. And I really like that idea. I think Vanessa's creativity really shows there. And then I brought some more pink in there for blush because I looked back at Vanessa's drawing and hers was a little bit heavier on the blush and I thought, yeah, that looks like fun. I'll do that too. <laughs> it kind of makes her look like she has allergies but in a cute way, you know? So this was my finished uh, recreation of Vanessa Draw's illustration. Thank you, Vanessa, for sharing it with me and allowing me to recreate it. Yeah, thanks for uh, collaborating with me. And let's move on to the next one. This next illustration will be a recreation of Snapshots of a Fool's illustration over on Instagram. As it is May, I, have, I, I can't go without doing a mermaid. <laughs> I am not sick of drawing mermaids yet. <laughs> And so when I saw this one, I was like, oh, I want to I want to recreate that. So what I did with this one was a little bit different than with Vanessa's drawing, because for this one, I thought, why don't I take the idea and try to see how I would tackle it without kind of like using snapshot of a fool's drawing verbatim. So what I did was I didn't have it like opened while I was drawing it. And anytime I needed a little bit of help, I would take a look. But for the most part, I left it up to what decisions would I make if I was drawing this illustration and if, if it was my idea to create it. And I thought that would be a little bit more interesting of an exercise to see how two different artists would kind of tackle the same drawing. And what I really liked about this one was the simple background and the composition of it because the character's head is like circled by the moon and then the hair like flows into the water. So those are the elements that I took from it and also the crown, the gorgeous seashell crown. Oh, this person knows how to draw seashells. I could learn a lesson or two from them. Oh my gosh. <laughs> and you'll see when I get to the part where I start adding a lot more detail to the seashells, they're not my specialty. <laughs> When I was looking at the reference, I thought it looked like they drew the character kind of looking down a little, like the face is pointing downwards and their eyes are looking up because they have those big, gorgeous, almost fish eyes. I also enlarged the moon and this kind of like centers the character inside of it a little bit more. And I think that helps with the composition. Again, I'm putting a lot of time into those eyes because I feel like the eyes were one of the focal points of Snapshot of a Fool's drawing because they're just so bright and like icy blue and they definitely like grab your attention right off the bat, which I absolutely loved about that drawing. For the hair, I remember in like the original drawing, it was definitely sitting on top of the water. So I tried to recreate that. One thing I did differently than Snapshots of a Fool was that I realized that this is a mermaid out of water. So maybe when a mermaid goes out of water, this is just my thoughts, obviously. Maybe when a mermaid <laughs> comes out of water, they lose that like magic that gives their hair so much volume. So I tried to flatten the hair and give it that like wet look. So I took it in and like had it come almost up against like the sides of the face and then pulled that almost straight down into the water. And then when it hits the water, it starts getting a little bit curlier, like it's sitting in the waves and definitely on top of the head as well, I flattened it down. And then because the hair is flattened, I made the crown a lot bigger for more contrast. And that like shows you the difference between this huge, gorgeous, ornate crown and like the hair that's wet and flat underneath of it. And, and I thought that conveyed a little bit more contrast than if I had left the crown the same size as it was in the original drawing. Now here I am erasing the drawing because I thought maybe I can try and use Copic markers on top of pencil, but I decided against it. I decided, okay, now that I've erased this for whatever reason, I'm gonna go over it with another pencil and just refine the lines a little bit more. This isn't how I usually go about things, but it definitely worked. And because I did this, I was able to play around with the facial structure a little bit more. So I sunk in the cheeks a little bit. I feel like that made it look a little bit more fish-like. And I also included like the scales around her nose that was from the reference. And I feel like that's a key feature of 
the original illustration, so I'm a little bummed that I didn't cover the right eye with hair. I feel like that also adds to the mystery of the character, so I like that a lot better in the original drawing. I kind of wish I could have uh, pulled that into my drawing a little bit. A little bummed about that. Now I still really wanted to add some color to this drawing and I had used graphite obviously and I don't really like mixing graphite with colors too often except digitally. So I took a snapshot of this drawing and I imported it into Photoshop. So here we are on my Wacom Cintiq 16 and I start outlining the basic character with just, you know, any color. It doesn't really matter because I'm going to be using this as a clipping mask. And clipping masks are like a shape that you can clip other layers to and it makes it so you can only draw within that shape. Once I have that basic shape out, I can start adding in the more simplified colors. So I color in like the eyes white and I color the hair and I color the shells a separate color. And I have these each on separate layers so that I can easily grab them and then stay within like that shape. I also added a pretty simple gradient to the green because I wanted that to seem not oily, but like, you know how a fish out of water kind of has that like shine to it. I wanted that to uh, show forth on the skin and I thought using gradients would be the best way to achieve that. I also did the same thing with the background, blocking out the shape on its own clipping mask and then adding in the sea as its own layer and then the moon as its own layer. And because this is digital, I'm able to use the circle selection tool and make a perfectly circular moon just like that. Isn't that great? <laughs> and I also added like a gradient to that so that there was some more texture. And because I used a lot of darker colors in the background, this moon just looks like it's glowing. And that is just the beauty of contrast, my friends. <laughs> and because I realized that about the background, I thought, oh, ho, 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 ho. <laughs> we could take this it's the actual character and add that same kind of contrast and make the moon look even brighter by darkening all of the colors in the character and making it look back lit so that hue saturation tool and just down through the darkness and now see how it looks like she's in the night like there's nothing lighting up the front half of her face and when I did this I actually duplicated the colors layer so I actually had a layer that was still the old brighter colors and now I had this new layer of the character that was the darker colors and I was able to erase the outside edge of the darker color layer and the lighter color layer which was underneath it was now showing through and that's just started that ooh it's glowing from behind kind of look. I'm getting really excited. <laughs> and that gives it that basic idea of being backlit. Then I went into the face and started shading it to give it a little bit more texture and to give it a little bit more three dimension. One of my favorite things is just add a little bloop on the nose, make it look brighter there. And I just kind of colored in with a lighter color places that I thought would protrude from the face and then places I thought would be, you know, less protrusive. What? <laughs> Darker? When it comes to painting a face, it's a lot of experimentation on my part, especially because I've never drawn a character being backlit. So I'm like, well, where would the light be reflecting? And like, if the water, if there's like the moon's hitting the water in front of her, would that reflect? I'm like, no, because then there'd be a shadow. I'm like, but how would the face be lit? And I really didn't know where to look for references for this. So I just kind of played around with it to see what I thought looked good and what I thought didn't really make sense. And in the end, I'm not gonna say <laughs> the lighting makes sense, but it looks, okay you know and shading the faces is like my favorite thing to do so I don't really care <laughs> I just had a lot of fun with it and then I decided to do something a little crazy I thought oh we have this glowing moon behind her right and we just have this very dark backlit character what if her eyes are glowing that'll add some like interest to those eyes because like I said one of the first things I noticed about the original drawing by snapshots of a fool was those eyes so I thought I better make those a focal point in my drawing too so the way I thought I would do that was by making them glow just like the moon so it's almost like this mermaid gets their power from the moon I don't know I, I thought it was interesting <laughs> A lot of it is just going over the same places and tweaking it just a little bit or like redoing something completely and then tweaking that a little bit. And that's really the glory of painting digitally is just your ability to fix things even after you've messed up. Oh, <laughs> here's me struggling to make seashells as beautifully as snapshots of a fool does. And struggling. 
So the hair is wet, right? When hair's wet, it tends to stick to your face, right? So if you had like a little strand of hair that was in front of your face and it was wet, it's gonna like stick and like, you know, caress the curves of your face. So I decided to add some strands. They like break up in bits, but then they become like one strand a little bit lower. Cause I don't know, I've seen hair do that. That's just something I'm taking from like recollection. And I feel like once I did this, it really just made the character feel like they're more in this environment and not just, you know, sitting there. And then once I had most of the details down, you know, as detailed as I get, <laughs> I thought the characters still didn't feel like they were within this environment. So I took a very soft round brush and then like the color of the moon and I went around the character and added this very soft glowing and then like around the water as well. And see, you can see when I turn it on and off <laughs> the difference that that made. And then I also added this around the eyes as well. And that just gives it that glowing effect instead of just like the piercing blue, it's like a glowing blue. And I have to be honest, I don't know how I feel about the glowing eyes. I feel like the character lost some of its friendliness when I made the eyes that like piercingly bright. And I, I really liked something about it before I had done that. But anyway, this is what the drawing turned out to be. I do wanna thank Snapshots of a Fool for sharing me their drawing so that I could recreate it and draw it in my own style to see how I would tackle that drawing. Honestly, I had way too much fun with it. Ah, I love mermaids. So seeing how someone else would draw mermaids and trying and pulling that into my own style was a lot of fun. Which brings me to the last drawing of today's video, which was this one here by Draw Me With Waffles, which is a suspicious name. But who am I to judge? What really drew me to this drawing <laughs> was that was the tones in the drawing. You don't ever see two similarly toned objects next to each other. You have the dark hair, you have that mid-tone skin, you've got that light colored crop top, and then you have the mid-tone skin, and then you have that dark belt, and then you have like a lighter dark pants. And you never see two similar tones next to each other. And that is something I've been working on for so long and I've had so much trouble with that seeing it done so well here was just like, oh, I need to try and recreate this so that maybe I can like retain some of this knowledge. <laughs> but I started the same way I start everything, you know, loosely sketching out the idea, making sure it fits on the page and yet somehow still managing to draw it too low on the page, but deciding it's probably not worth the effort of erasing it and then continuing by darkening up the lines that I like. I found that way too easy to say. Something I did change from the original source drawing was that the original drawing was straight on. So the face was looking straight at the camera, the body was looking straight at the camera, and that's just not usually considered very flattering in photography. So I took the head and just twisted it the smidgiest. So it's still almost head on, but it's not as, um, forceful as it would be if you were, you know, looking directly at someone like making perfect eye contact. You know how that can make you feel a little uncomfortable? Well, the same thing happens with like when you're drawing. There are times when you do want to draw like that straight on and it's for specific reasons, but when we're trying to draw just like a little friendly drawing, I like to just twist it a little bit. Obviously you can do whatever you want. I'm just talking about what I like to do. Then when it came to the body, I twisted it a ton. Like I took that thing and just <laughs> almost like 30 degrees, right? This again, just shows off the curves of the character a little bit better. And it's just overall a little bit more flattering. And you'll notice when I am drawing this, I'm not worrying about tone right off the bat because if you add too much graphite, you're going to be smudging it all over the place. So I'm just worried about getting those central lines and the line art and the shape of the character the way I want it before I'm adding in all of that tone. Except for the eyebrows, I just really wanted to do big dark eyebrows. <laughs> I couldn't help myself. Now because the hair is going to be shaded in very darkly when we get to the end there, and the skin is a bit of a mid-tone, I thought it would be fun to break that up a little bit by adding in some kind of earrings that would be like paper white. Again, we're not putting any two tones next to each other that are too similar. And because we haven't used any light tones around the face, we're able to add those in. And I think it works really well. I looked back at the source drawing and I realized her hair is a lot more voluminous at the top near her like near her scalp. And then it kind of like tapers in as it goes, as you follow the length of the hair. So I decided to adjust that and, um, you know, do the same thing. So now it's poofier up near the scalp and it 
kind of tapers in when it gets down to the waist. Then I just had to draw in the hand, again, following the source drawings pose. I make sure I'm not varying too much like I did with the last one. This time I had like the source drawing open so that I could reference it a lot easier. Now that I've made basically all the decisions I need to make for the drawing when it comes to pose, I can go in and start adding in that tone, which was the whole point. <laughs> I am so excited about this. So adding in like that mid-tone skin, avoiding any shading around the tube top to make sure that there's a lot of contrast there and then darkening up the pants. I personally like there to be like visible hatching from the pencil. I like when it looks like it's a sketch and it's not like a photo. I mean, obviously, pfft. It's a little cartoony to look like a photo, but when it comes to like shading and stuff, I like it to be visible that it was drawn with a pencil. So I'm not too worried about filling in every single space with graphite to making it a perfectly even tone. I like those little spotches of like paper that you can see through it. And so when I'm coloring it in, I'm kind of just layering pencil on top of each other over and over again. And I'm not pushing too hard, except for where I want it to be really, really dark. And here is the finished illustration. This one was a lot of fun because I've really been enjoying just drawing with pencil lately. You don't need a lot of art supplies to be able to make art. And I wanna thank everyone for being such good sports and allowing me to recreate your art and to see how I would uh, go about drawing something very similar to yours. If you're interested in having me redraw your art in a future video, I'm going to make a new hashtag. It's hashtag draw this with waffles. <laughs> and you can use that on any of the social media and I'm sure I will bump into it. It's kind of like doing a collab with you guys and it's a lot of fun. And of course, I don't know if I need to say this, but I want to say this and that Everybody is on their own art journey and it's not about being better or worse than anyone else, but being yourself and creating art that you want to create and improving in the things you want to improve on. And this video is not about being better or worse at something, but about trying and really putting in your effort and seeing what you can create. I wanna thank everyone for watching and I'll see you guys all next week. I hope you have a delicious evening full of waffles. Bye.